back to Morbidly Bewitched, the channel where I will take you on a journey through the morbid side of life. My favourite. In the last video, I discussed burials and, as promised, in this one, I'm going to discuss cremations. So stay tuned. I'm your hostess, Leanne. Let's get started. Cremations, one of my favourites. Ah yes, once considered the pagan preference for funerals is now dominating the funeral industry, even over burials. In Northern Ireland, yes, that's where I'm from. Just in case you haven't figured that out, this is my telephone voice, so you probably didn't notice. We only have the one crematorium, so as with all of my videos, even discussing the burials, I will be sticking roughly to my own rules and regulations. So please bear in mind that depending on where you're from, these may change slightly. Although I do think the foundations of the policies will remain roughly the same. Went and got myself a cup of tea. Pause the video yourself one. So, what's allowed? One, you cannot just rock up to the crematorium with Uncle Jimmy in a bed sheet. Take him. No, you have to provide a vessel for the remains, i.e. a coffin. Two, that coffin cannot be adorned with heavy metal. So you unfortunately cannot pick one of those gorgeous, big, elaborate American caskets. <laughs> and even if you do decide to go for one of the, the nice, soft, solid wood coffins to be cremated, they usually come with metal handles, which your funeral director will have to remove and change to plastic. So don't be upset by the handles being changed. Three, things inside the coffin. So what you put in along with Uncle Jimmy cannot be combustible. You can't put him in with aerosols, large bottles of whiskey, or anything that's going to explode. I will get on to the topic of things like pacemakers and implants at a later date, but for this video, we'll just stick to the basics. Jewelry. Some pieces of jewellery are extremely important, of sentimental value to an awful lot of people. What to do? Whenever you bury someone, you usually put that piece of jewellery on them so that it remains with them. So cremation. Your choice, and what I think is quite a nice choice to adopt, is if you keep the jewellery before the cremation, and then after the cremation, when you get the remains back, put that piece of jewellery in with the ashes. If you're going to keep the ashes, of course, or bury them. I'm going to discuss in another video the different things you can do with cremated remains because it's vast. I think I'll have to dedicate a whole video just to that subject alone. But it means that piece of jewellery retains its form. If you put the piece of jewellery in with the deceased during the, the cremation, as much as it might seem poetically romantic, it's not going to stay the same. Yes, you'll get it back along with the cremated remains, but it's not going to look anything like the original piece of jewellery because it will be with the heat molten, twisted and not the same shape at all. Clothing. What to put on the deceased for cremation. This can be anything that you want at all. It can be the fanciest suit, the fanciest dress, the person's wedding dress or wedding suit, or it can be their casuals. When if they walked about in life with their jeans and a polo shirt on all the time, put that on them. It could be to do with their profession. It wouldn't be the first time I've seen someone choose to wear what they did in life, like if they were a clown. But this really is very personal. And yes, you can provide underwear. 
but you don't have to. It really isn't set in stone. The only thing for cremation that they advise you don't put on is shoes. It's frowned upon, but not completely excluded. So if you do provide shoes, someone's not gonna be turned away at the crematorium just because they've got those on them. They don't actually check their feet. It's just slightly frowned upon. Now for the interesting bit, the furnace. Crematorium furnaces are usually made up of three layers. Metal on the outside, heavily insulated, and layered with brick on the inside, all designed to keep the heat in. Everything's then ran on roller systems to get the coffin inside the furnace, the doors closed, and the process begins. These furnaces run between 1000 and 1300 degrees. This is extreme heat. In fact, if a furnace is switched off in the evening, the very next morning, you could still fry an egg in said furnace. Mm -hmm. So what does that do to the human body? Well, we are made up of elements, water, soft tissue, cartilage and bone. Over the course of two to three hours, depending on the size of the body, the soft tissue, the cartilage, the water, all evaporates and gets reduced down by the heat, leaving nothing but bone marrow. The furnace is then opened and everything that's left behind is gathered and brought to the front. Don't worry, nothing's left behind. A crematorium attendant then looks through the cremated remains for any heavy metals like hip replacements or implants. Those are removed and the cremated remains are then put into the cremulator. The cremulator basically grinds these down to a finer dust, which is what you get back, the cremated remains. These resemble fine gravel and weigh anything between one to two kilograms, usually in around the weight of a bag of sugar. You can then organize through your funeral director what you want to do with those cremated remains. You can either pick them up from the funeral home or you can get them directly from the crematorium. Don't worry about going out and getting an urn or some kind of container to go and collect them. The crematorium itself will provide a vessel for these remains to hand them back to you. And then it's up to you what you want to do with them. Join me in my next video where this is exactly what I'll be discussing. All of your different options of what you can do with cremated remains. Please subscribe and I'll see you soon.